Canada's rich history is not confined to its bustling cities and breathtaking landscapes. Hidden within the folds of its expansive territories are remnants of once vibrant communities, now eerie and desolate ghost towns. Each of these abandoned settlements has a unique story to tell, echoing the bygone eras and the people who once called them home. In this video, we'll explore the history and mysteries surrounding some remarkable Canadian ghost towns. Barkerville, British Columbia In the heart of the Caribou Mountains, Barkerville emerged during the 1860s as a bustling gold rush town. Named after prospector Billy Barker, this town boasted a population of over 5,000 at its peak. Today, Barkerville stands as a meticulously preserved historic site, providing visitors with an immersive experience into the gold rush era, complete with costumed actors reenacting life in the 1800s. Kitsalt, British Columbia A town that isn't just occupied, it's owned. In 1979, a molybdenum mine, yes, you should Google that one, was being built in BC's north coast region. Phelps Dodge, an American company, built a town designated for 1,200 people to staff and support that mine. This town had a mall, a restaurant, a pool, and even a bowling alley. In 1982, molybdenum price crashed, hard. The mine's value plunged so much, the town was completely evacuated only 18 months after residents first moved in. In 2004, Krishnan Sutantiran, an Indian-Canadian business person, paid less than $6 million to buy the entire town. Sure, he's paid at least $2 million more since to keep it up, and it's closed to the public, but things might be changing soon. Kitsalt is a proposed location for a terminal site in the export of liquefied natural gas. If the pipeline does get routed that way, Kitsalt may just rise from the grave. Valjalbert, Quebec Valjalbert's story centers around a pulp mill that drove its growth in the early 20th century. Founded in 1901, near Chambord, the closure of its pulp mill in 1927 meant the entire town was abandoned in just a few years. Oddly, the town was very advanced in its day. It boasted electricity and running water all 25 years before the rest of the province. Workers at the mill were among the highest paid in the day. Some even held on for years hoping the mill would reopen, but in 1929, the company ordered the buildings boarded up. The mill still stands, as do over 40 of the town's original buildings. In fact, Valjalbert has a reputation for incredibly well-preserved buildings, possibly the best in the country. Not sure how they judge that. Is there a nightgown section? A talent contest? Valjalbert is a heritage site now, and visitors can also make the short trip to Wiashin Falls, which are higher than Niagara Falls themselves. If heights don't bother you, you can even step out on the glass platform of the lookout housed within the falls themselves. There are tours, immersive history shows, actors in period costumes portraying townspeople, restaurants, guest rooms, and other great tourist trappings. It's second only to the Zoo of St. Felician when it comes to Lac Saint Jean tourist attractions. If this is a ghost town, it's a friendly one. Orion, Alberta At its peak, this southern Alberta hamlet housed about 150 people. It sits about 80 kilometers from Medicine Hat. Built in 1916, it died in the 1930s. Another victim of the infamous Dust Bowl, Drought, Grasshoppers, and the Great Depression, Orion still houses whole streets of abandoned buildings. Seven residents remain today, but the town's grain elevators were leveled recently. Just one more reason the town's future seems bleak. Sandin, British Columbia Nestled in the rugged Selkirk Mountains, Sandin was a silver mining boomtown in the late 1800s. At its zenith, it boasted over 5,000 residents. As silver prices plummeted, Sandin's fortune declined and it was eventually abandoned. Exploring the remnants of Sandin today provides a haunting glimpse into its once thriving past, with crumbling buildings and a sense of time frozen. Darcy, British Columbia Darcy, situated in the stunning Pemberton Valley, had its heyday as a hub for gold mining and logging during the early 1900s. Over time, the population dwindled, and today it offers a tranquil escape from the hustle and bustle with a few remaining buildings standing as silent witnesses to its past. Crow's Nest Pass, Alberta Crow's Nest Pass isn't a single ghost town, but a collection of several abandoned mining towns, including Blairmore and Coleman. 
These towns prospered during the coal mining boom, but eventually succumbed to economic shifts and declining coal prices. Today, visitors can explore the remnants of these once thriving communities, including mine sites, historic buildings, and railway tracks. Bents, Saskatchewan Bents was a critical trading post and stop for travelers during the late 19th century. Its strategic location along the Carlton Trail made it a bustling hub for fur traders and pioneers. Over time, as transportation routes shifted, Bents lost its prominence, leaving behind crumbling buildings and a glimpse into its former importance. Silver Islet, Ontario Silver Islet, located on a small island in Lake Superior, became famous for hosting one of the world's richest silver mines during the late 1800s. The entire town was constructed to support the mining operation. Today, the remains of the mining infrastructure stand as eerie reminders of a once thriving industry, surrounded by the stunning natural beauty of Lake Superior. Bankhead, Alberta Nestled within the Banff National Park, Bankhead thrived as a coal mining town in the early 20th century. The town was closely linked to the Banff Springs Hotel, providing coal to fuel its operations. Bankhead's decline came when the hotel switched to natural gas. Now, it's a historic site where visitors can explore the ruins of the coal mine and the town's infrastructure, set against the backdrop of the majestic Canadian Rockies. Ireland's Eye, Newfoundland Ireland's Eye was first settled by Europeans in the 1600s. We're not even sure when in the 1600s, because Google Maps was 400 years away. People fished the area for cod in the centuries thereafter, and there was a peak population of 157 in 1911. New Finland didn't even join Canada until 1949, so this place was on the decline even before they were eligible to be included in this list. Now, the settlement was on an island, 13 kilometers from the nearest road, and the fishery was in steady decline. Ireland's eye never really stood a chance. The entire population was moved away in the 1960s as part of what was called the Fisheries Household Resettlement Program. Today, a lot of buildings have decayed, but those that do remain, as well as the incredible natural scenery, still attract visitors. Balaclava, Ontario Balaclava was a bustling, lumbering community in the 1800s, thanks to its proximity to timber resources and waterways for transportation. As the timber industry evolved and transportation routes changed, Balaclava gradually faded into obscurity. Today, it offers a glimpse into the past, with abandoned sawmills and a sense of quiet nostalgia. Cassiar, British Columbia Cassiar, situated in the northern reaches of British Columbia, rose to prominence during the mid-20th century as an asbestos mining town. The mine, one of the world's largest at the time, drove the economy. However, concerns over asbestos health risks led to the mine's closure, and Cassiar was abandoned. Today, the town stands as a haunting reminder of the human and environmental cost of asbestos mining. Canadian ghost towns are more than just abandoned buildings. They are portals to the past, offering a deeper understanding of the nation's history and the challenges faced by its early settlers. Each town tells a unique story, and visiting them is like stepping back in time allowing us to reflect on the rise and fall of communities that played a pivotal role in shaping Canada's cultural and industrial landscape. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe.